Welcome back to the Woodworking Talk Show. This episode is sponsored by me. <laughs> if you're looking for a comprehensive step-by-step -step approach to learning woodworking from the ground up, and you know, let's face it, nobody wants to learn woodworking from the sky down, right? I mean, so you don't need to look any further than The Weekend Woodworker. That's my online course that'll teach you how to build your first project this weekend. No experience necessary. And to help you get started, I've assembled a free guide to all the tools you'll need and how you can get them for less than $1,000. Head over to mytoollist.com and download your free guide today. Vicki Lee is a builder, a DIYer, a home remodeler, a woodworker, a carpenter, a food blogger, an author. She started her YouTube channel, The Carpenter's Daughter, on February 19, 2015, and since then has posted 250 videos showing how to build all kinds of stuff, including various structures from dog houses to full-size sheds and storage units. Vicki, I think at this point, we can probably, you could probably build a shed in your sleep, don't, don't you think? Uh, you're, kind of the queen, you're kind of the queen of sheds. How many, how many sheds have you made? I made a total of four now, but four. that's not including the small mini things. Like I classify the dog house as a mini shed. It is. That was a little starter and like a shed chest box. I wouldn't go as far as saying doing it in my sleep though, but that's because when I work with my dad, he is a professional. He works really quickly. Yeah. It's all just, he just knows, he, he builds maybe four or five sheds a week. Oh my He's God. done thousands. And they're huge, they're all custom made. So when I go to the wood yard, I've got to try and keep up with his pace. So it's a great environment to, uh, well, feel inferior. <laughs> I feel um, just, just, to, just to keep practicing. I could do it much slower if I built all the panels separately. And that, to be honest, when you watch a lot of YouTube videos, that's what I was going to do. I usually do a load of research before I go to my dad's wood yard because I can make as much noise as I want there. And I'll say, Dad, just leave me to it. I want to build my shed. You know, I've got a room at the back if I want. And I'll and I'll say, I've done my research. I want to do this. You don't do it like that. This is what you do. And it, <laughs> maybe most dads are like that. It's their way or or right. no way. Especially he's been a he's a car carpenter, a cabinet maker, and a joiner, and he's been doing it for over fifty years. Oh my god! So, for example, when I took the pocket hole jig to the wood yard to build a chicken coop. He instantly told me, don't use that anymore. <laughs> That's not strong. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it, but, I, I learned totally differently on my own than a wood yard. And it, it's good to have that uh, variety, I must admit. <laughs> besides building lots of sheds, well, at least four and other things, Vicky's got videos on how to make gates, how to build a fence, tear out a chimney, lay bricks, build walls, install countertops, install cabinets, upcycle furniture, install window blinds, make a driveway, build a patio. The list goes on and on. But most recently, she's bought a 57 foot narrow boat that she's fixing up. I can't wait to learn more about this. There seems to be really no limit to the types of projects that Vicky will tackle and share with the world on her YouTube channel and blog. Watching her and her channel evolve is pretty inspiring for viewers at any skill level. And although Vicki, and I know that your brand is the carpenter's daughter, but I think it's pretty clear that you're solidly Vicki Lee, the carpenter. Hey, Vicki, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> My, my overly long intro there. I got sidetracked on your sheds because I love watching you build those sheds. Before we get into anything else, one, give me one good tip for somebody who wants to build a shed. Start from the bottom and work your way up, always. That was the thing I didn't know initially. And actually, if you just build a basic base to the size that you want, where you want it, and once you ply line it, you can actually use the um, the framework for the panels. You can draw around it while it's on the base. And that will help you cut, get your measurements without using a tape measure. So, uh, yeah, I keep trying to show it. 
in every video. I mean, it gets boring because it's like, oh, I've shown this already. <laughs> but I like to try and explain it in even easier language each time I do it. And it's funny because I learn something new every time that I build a shed. But that is the key thing to me is start with base. You get an, a good idea and you can keep moving it around and you can easily adjust it if you if you need to. What's like the biggest pitfall, the biggest thing to look out for building a shed? Oh, well, with four sheds, I probably haven't built enough as my dad, so I couldn't. You can still do them in your sleep, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I know, I know. When you are doing your tongue and groove, absolutely make sure that they all slot in properly because... Oh. If you get it slightly out by the time you've got to the bottom of a window or the top of a door and it's running along with your fuller pieces above it, it can look slightly out. And quite early on on one of them, I had to um, just just slightly, if you do mess up, then you can, if you catch it early, you can slightly space it out just a mil just to, um, to sort it. But yeah, that is definitely a problem. And you can have warped wood. That I found in my last one where I had to use clamps constantly because wood's expensive at the moment so I had to be really resourceful on a charity uh, tea shed that I built. Is that the one yeah. that opens up the side of that opens up um, to yeah, the serving two. serving shed? Yes. Yeah I love that. That's yeah, really cool. That, I, I love that build. Yeah you see those at and I think that's what you built it for was a local like team right so that they would yes. have like a concession yeah, stand yeah. or something. Yeah. If, in fact, not not a lot of people. Um, know, I don't know if you've heard of Kevin Keegan, the no. uh, the England football manager from the sixties or maybe it was the seventies, oh. and he's that's he's from the same village as me. So uh, I thought this is quite unique. Big England foot well, oh England football manager, local kids club, their football tea. Something like that. I think it was that yeah, their tea shed had got damaged. They also had a, a metal unit that had all of the football kit as well, and they had arson attacks. So my uncle in America had funded it, spoke to my dad, and my dad, well, I heard a lot of the grapevine, oh, right, Vicky will do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not right. Sorry, he's not wrong. I'll do it. <laughs> that kind of sums up your channel. There's like nothing you won't take on, though, is there? I always want to, to keep learning. Yeah. And push myself out of my comfort zone because I know that deep down I'm quite lazy and five years ago in fact when I look at the holiday pictures of when we went to Scotland in the camper van like my younger self and I'll look at myself thinking she knew nothing <laughs> she <laughs> didn't know how to lay this or yeah and I, I, I do feel proud of yeah. of the I like the idea of being more independent because when me and my husband had bought a house that needed renovating in the Midlands we didn't know anyone in the area. So one of the things that I thought was, well, my parents, well, both of our parents, my husband's parents were in construction and logistics and, and ground works. And my dad's a, a woodworker, but they weren't very close. So I kept having to give them a ring or rely on YouTube videos. And I used to think if something happened to my husband, I'm here on my own. Mm. And I want to, I want to know how to, fix a leaky pipe so i suppose although i'm called the carpenter's daughter i like the idea of it's i've just seen them do just get on with stuff so it's not necessarily just about woodworking i found like a patio uh, video do a lot better than my woodworking videos yeah but there's know, only one patio that you can do <laughs> <laughs> but you've got at the, kind of the, the nature of your channel is you have a huge range of projects mm. and things that that you tackle is there anything that you just absolutely wouldn't wouldn't touch or you just like electrics oh, oh really yeah. the, it's yeah, i can't even be bothered to look into it because i just think <laughs> it sounds dangerous there's only one video about electrics that i've ever put up and that was an electrician that was doing rewiring the house that we're in now yeah and he said vicky i want to show you how to just change change a socket yeah. and i thought i should know that but i i keep out of it generally <clears throat> excuse me that's probably so, yeah that was that's I, probably I good advice 
to yeah. stay out of it, at least as far as posting anything to YouTube goes, yes, <laughs> because yes. you yes. will hear from people if you post anything yeah. electric. Yeah. And every 30 seconds, I purposely put a little disclaimer, this is for entertainment purposes right. only, because <laughs> if you ever search for things on, on Google, yeah. it will randomly pick a certain time point in a video. Yeah. And, and so it'll skip to the most important part or the most interesting bit. So anybody watching hasn't seen the big disclaimer right at the beginning, so I thought, right, you can't miss this. Mm. Although I got a pers person saying, well, why are you putting it up there? Well, I still want to learn it and it's i wanted to document it for selfish reasons i suppose <laughs> let's go back and talk about your backstory a little bit first of all i noticed because this is the thing i like to do is I always like to look at the very first video that somebody posted on their channel <laughs> yeah thanks so it, it's basically like blackmail material you know or yeah. something so okay so your, your first video is very descriptively titled i must say it's uh, yeah it's called, too much how to paint in shabby chic a table using Wix chalk paint slash Annie Sloan dark wax and Ron Seal varnish. <laughs> <laughs> I was just searching for that exact thing and there it comes. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but let's go back. What, what led up to you posting that <clears throat> video? And I know you had a, a channel before that briefly, or at, at least it started really soon before that channel, you had a cooking channel, but what led up to all of this kind of coming together on YouTube? Well, before the cooking channel, I used to have an eBay vintage clothing business, which I loved. I've always, well, before that, I used to be a manager for a retail fashion store uh, for about eight years. And I went to work for myself because I was putting a lot of effort in monthly charity fashion shows. And my parents actually said, you should start working for yourself. This is silly. And you're spending so much, doing so much overtime unpaid. So anyway, I started a business and I got bored of it. And I thought, I want to do cooking videos. I watched a lot of people's YouTube videos. I was quite late discovering YouTube because I thought about this the other day. When I went to uni, what well, when I went to uni, I didn't watch YouTube at all. And I'd come back at weekends and see my parents laughing their head off at some elephant trumping or, or whatever. <laughs> and I thought, what is YouTube? So it wasn't until my early 30s that I discovered discovered it. And I, I just thought, that looks quite fun. And I studied performing arts at um, at, at school. Not, not university, I did English and journalism there. So I think it was more... I was curious about how people were putting themselves out there. And so I combined my eBay business, which I used to like finding old pieces of furniture and upcycle them. So I'd upcycle them, do really basic videos and, and then put them online to sell. I wouldn't sell them to, to the audience because I, I didn't like the idea of anyone finding out where I lived. I, I just think that's a fine line. <laughs> and <clears throat> The problem was I was upcycling so many pieces of furniture and where do you put them all while they're up for sale? So anyway, I started doing, um, I was cooking videos at the same time, but anyway, we'd not long moved into a house that needed doing up and it was our first house. And after about, a, maybe about seven months of, of doing cooking videos and upcycling vi videos at the same time, my husband turned around and said, and Oh, I didn't like it. He said, if you put just as much effort into our house as you do on that, on your YouTube channel, we'd have a house done by now. Oh. And I thought, oh, and I really <laughs> didn't like it. And I thought, maybe you've got a point. So after I'd got over it and he wanted, well, we, we used to have a camper van, a Mazda Bongo. We've had two and the first one, it overheated and we got another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, I'm losing... Uh, train of thought here oh yeah that's it so my husband said right first thing I really want you to do because he was at work while I was doing all the renovations and stuff I want you to um, turn we'd got another van and he wanted me to turn it into a camper van and I really didn't want to do it because I didn't know what I was doing but I thought if I I, I just thought oh maybe if I can make that a YouTube channel I can have fun at the same time and they were really rubbish videos I certainly wouldn't put that little amount in a video today but then I noticed that that channel um, the carpenter's daughter it was getting more engagement than my food 
channel and it hurt. I didn't, uh, oh, it's <laughs> coming off that. Oh, no. Because I, <laughs> I was spending so much effort into the food. But I still got a food blog and I still create content for it, but I don't bother with the the Tastefully Vicky YouTube channel anymore. I think food is, is probably too competitive and deep down. Oh. I want to look back and see what I've built. I don't want to... You can't see all the meals that you've eaten. They're, they're long, long gone. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, that was probably a long version. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the, the cooking space on YouTube is just so saturated. It's incredible. I, mm -hmm. so, it's such a competitive space. But you've also got a... You did a uh, your own cookbook, too. I saw you've got... Yeah. It's uh, available on Amazon. It was. It's about soups, right? Yes, I love a soup. <laughs> soup Baker Recipe 65 low fat bowls of health i like that title although i must admit i don't do low fat things anymore no i've i now follow more of a keto diet or low not carb. necessarily the strict keto but i uh, i i'd rather have full fat yeah. cheeses oils rather than carbs yeah. because i think this time last year I, I actually built myself a treadmill desk and i was walking on my treadmill doing almost forty thousand steps a day and calorie counting and my weight was going up and I thought this isn't this is just odd so yeah. I, I anyway I upped my game with exercise changed my diet completely and then I realized I don't have to work so hard walking and right. the weight just dropped off so yeah I'm in a happy place <laughs> it's all about the food really if you want to lose weight it just comes down to what you're eating and I think it's, I think a low carb diet is really kind of the way to go I think the carbs mm -hmm. are just they will eat you alive <laughs> well the thing i found was there's so much conflicting information online when it comes to oh, diet oh, carbs worse. aren't bad or yes they are and i just generally found that growing up we were always big carby stew eaters it was always um stew and dumplings we always had big meals potatoes and, and i found 30 odd years later that actually it was the carbs that were making me hungry you've got you've got to wean off them for about two days because that's I'm, true two days and then my i don't get that burning hunger feeling anymore mm. which is a relief yeah a lot of times those carbs you start eating them and then it's just like you just want more and more you just can't stop mm. and then afterwards you're like oh god what did i do that you also had i think it was last year you posted a you built a dumbbell rack for I thought that was yes. uh, no, and that that must have been a lockdown video right during the whole lockdown you probably yes. built that and that was probably very timely because a lot of people were just <laughs> trying to work out any way they could you were lucky to have dumbbells because I guess they were really hard to find in a lot of 2020 they were so expensive and they still are I think those ones have gone up in price and I think they're about 35 pounds but nowhere could I find any dumbbell set with a decent tree oh that, that rack was ridiculous it was this yes. plastic it was like you showed it was just wobbling back and forth i'm like yeah this is what you want to put heavy weights on yeah yeah <laughs> i'm hoping that does really well in january <laughs> yeah right see that's what you got to go promote that again is just start pushing yeah. that stuff out there yeah but it, it looked what? great do you still get a lot of time to work out i do it every morning Oh, good. The only yeah. thing is, I've had to ease off um, doing high intensity things at the moment. Well, I say every morning, I don't do it at weekends. It's just Monday to Friday. So I've had to ease off at the moment because I, I think my knees were a bit sore because I was really pushing myself. I upped my weights to seven and a half kilograms, which I think is 15 pounds yeah. each or something like that. So it was probably too much and my hamstrings were getting tight. So at the moment, the last 20 days, I've, I've gone to yoga for now just to try and stretch out. I'm not flexible at all. And that's I think that's a problem. <laughs> so I, I think you might be kind of taking up automotive refinishing. Is it? Oh, no, wait, you're <laughs> not going to do automotive yeah. refinishing. No, no, no. <laughs> that was, um, oh, God, I just that saw that video. Coaster. I think you just posted it yesterday. And I, it was really yes. funny. I, I was just, just like, I felt for you. hated that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the thing is, I'd psyched myself up watching loads of YouTube videos for what seemed like weeks with millions of views that came right to the top, great results. And I tried to follow them to the letter. And 
it was it was just disaster after disaster there were a couple of factors that might have been um an issue that the peeling was about two years old so just so, describe what you were doing on this video and what, what this was all about so i've got a red mini and the lacquer well the the clear coat on it it had peeled quite soon after we bought our first pressure washer somebody said that it wasn't a pressure washer issue but if I've also read that if you get too close with a pressure washer, it can break the clear coat and it starts to peel. So I got a quote for someone from someone to fix it two to three years ago. Uh, this was in the Midlands, which is slightly more south than where we are now. I always think up north, everything's cheaper anyway. So I got a quote for £300 to, to try and fix the clear coat. But they wouldn't take it from take it down to bare metal and they couldn't guarantee that it would that would be the end of it he actually said something like um you'll probably get some more peeling elsewhere so i thought i don't really want to be pay, paying that so i should have really rung around for more quotes i just left it as it is. <laughs> you're like not, challenge yeah. accepted <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm not i'm not a car fanatic my car's 11 years old i'm not if I drove around in an old banger, it wouldn't upset me. I certainly wouldn't be embarrassed. I would be embarrassed if I got a big drip mark on the front, which I did. But yeah, I tried to gently sand it back, follow, following loads of diff different techniques. But I couldn't find the ultimate video, really, when I look back. There's, there wasn't an ultimate video of this could go wrong, don't do this, or this is how you do it. So you've got to watch tons of videos for that particular thing, I think. Anyway, so I'm gently sanding with, well, I start off with 600 grit, which is what somebody recommended. And I can probably hear people that, no, it's just too <laughs> coarse. See, I wouldn't know. Me. I have no, I would have no clue. I, mean, I don't know anything about car finishes. I just know I wouldn't, that wouldn't be something I would take on. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see these videos and you think, oh, that looks encouraging. That worked. It just, just leave it alone. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> Oh my God. So you ended up having to take the thing and get it professionally done anyway, though, right? Yes. But yeah. it, but it was and kind I, of like a fallback, right? Because you knew, well, I, it, it, it sort of makes sense. It's like, well, I might as well just try it. At least I know I can take yeah. it and get it professionally done if it doesn't work out. But then you're adding a hundred pounds onto the, the final price. Oh, something right. That, yeah. Something that I wish I'd put in that video is filming me at the auto body shop and said my husband did it and, <laughs> and did it just look at the camera <laughs> oh that would have been funny yeah my son has well, a uh, my son has a mini cooper just like that i think this is a little bit newer red one they're, they're really cool little cars yeah i just definitely wouldn't do that again that was funny but you know you've, you've got to try these things though you don't know until you to it till you give it a go so one of your videos, you had a, a quote, and I'm paraphrasing here because I don't really remember what it was, but you said that um, a lot of the videos that you see on YouTube are DIY projects are really specific to the person doing that particular project and whatever it is they're doing. And so that you chose to shoot your videos of your projects as sort of almost a responsibility or like, you know, an obligation to help people out just to show yes. them your process because when we've got a house and we've got a project to do it's not it's not one size fits all so for example i was coving my bedroom it used to be a living room this it was at the last place and i had pipes to contend with and i googled online saw some terrible finishes where the dodgily cut holes out for the pipes. I might have seen the odd good one, I, I can't remember, but I thought that that's the sort of thing that I needed help with. And I, it's, you know, when you can't find the solution you're looking for and it's quite painful, you're like, oh, I wanna know. And it's, it's, it's a journey. So I'd rather film and document it, just put it out there. I suppose it's a gap in the market, if you like, to try and help someone and I tried it and I, I was really happy with how it went. I did like one little test sample cutting around some, it was polystyrene coving, so it was easier to, to do and I had some offcuts of it. And yeah, that's been a popular video. 
and I like to try and save people a lot of time because I've spent hours trying to work out I, proca I procrastinate when I can't find what I'm looking for and I'll put something off assuming I can't do it I suppose we've all got jobs around the house you, you've just prioritized for the ones for the easy wins and like oh I'll leave that till later and those are the ones like oh I wish I'd if if I knew it was that easy and there's been a few situations like that yeah it's interesting though to, in, to be <clears throat> documenting what you're doing as the first time that you've been doing it in a lot of cases and mm. uh, I just think that's really helpful to see the you know mistakes that you make along the way and how you overcome those because that can be kind of extrapolated into the bigger picture I think which is helpful to a lot of people and you as as you're trying to learn something I'll have a lot of questions like if I did this would that happen would that break if I did that so I like to I think it's really useful to try and answer all the possibilities well all the questions that I've had in my head and try and build somebody's confidence up I'd rather be honest about any mistakes because there's nothing worse than wasting your your time and money like a car bonnet and <laughs> <laughs> it's it's frustrating so I'd, I'd rather empower someone yeah than um than the other way around what kind of what kind of project or video performs the best on your channel um i think it's the larger projects really the ones that you don't expect a female to be doing like when i did my patio which I, I suppose there's a lot more females doing it now which is cool the smaller projects like the um the dumbbell tree because they're probably so specific to me that i don't think they do as well but that's something that i need so i think that's important i don't want to get bored doing things just to try and impress the algorithm right whatever the algorithm is who knows <laughs> it's just we're all chasing this non-existent thing that nobody yeah. can barely pin down but your most popular video is the offense that you made oh. using the the concrete posts with the yeah. this, the slide in the pieces we that looked great are you happy with the way I that turned hated out? that you hated the project or you hated the video or or what almost everything because <laughs> and it's your most one. popular one <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and that just goes to show you don't have to be perfect yeah. for a project because i know that the i have to bite my tongue i know that the posts stick out a bit too much but i needed help with my husband those concrete posts are really heavy he doesn't want to be in the video so i have to crop out his head so <laughs> people do think oh she's trying to pretend she's done it on her oh. own and absolutely not but I suppose we learned a, a lot about each other when we were doing that. We argued quite a bit. <laughs> I didn't like the. I didn't like doing it. I would have loved to go back, rip it all out, start again, dig the holes deeper. But with concrete, you just can't do it. So I thought next time when my dad is doing fencing, because his business is sheds and fencing. So next time he's doing um, some fencing, I thought I might do do that with him. Like, come on, dad, show me your best tips and tricks. But apparently fence panels are, or at least lap panels are really um, hard to get hold of now or they're really expensive. Oh, really? Shipping them from, from abroad. Yeah. And it's, I think it's more profitable to do sheds. Oh. So he's had to prioritize. Right. And do you, is that, just, did you move out of that place? Are you still in that? Yeah. You did, didn't you? Because didn't you? Um, I think you fixed up just about everything in there. I know you put a new driveway, right? New yeah, gravel the, driveway. There were, there were a big overlap of me actually um, leaving. Mm -hmm. So it might have been confusing to people because I didn't want to say, hey, my house is up for sale. Because <laughs> I didn't want people to yeah. see, find out where I was. So at weekends, while the house was up for sale, me and my husband would go, up north to renovate a bungalow that they'd bought cheap so i was learning how to rip out a chimney breast knock out a, a wall for a doorway and then a few months later i launched the news to say right we've now bought this the house that we were doing up and sold the other one 
So yeah, the, and it, there's a lot of people that will say our house isn't for sale. Do you want to go and buy it? And that scares me completely. Yeah. I could, just couldn't do it, or I could never have a business with an address and say, "Come to my business." Right. It, it just makes me feel. Well, you could probably sell the house anything. for more. You just say, as seen on YouTube, and then people yeah. can watch all of those videos. Yeah. About, they see everything that you did on that house. Does the new house require much work? Not really, not anymore. There's still a few jobs. In fact, I was looking at, at them today because after the, uh, the bonnet restoration or attempt, I wanted to be able to... That's going to be your most infamous video, probably. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> you like the fencing one. <laughs> I, I, I want to do a gravel path in front of my workshop. So that's something that I want to tackle in the next couple of weeks, really. This week, I'm going to be building a, a built, some built-in wardrobe doors. We've got a walk-in wardrobe, but it's been open, all the rails and that, that are there already. But because it's usable, we haven't done anything about it. We were going to put some sliding mirrored wardrobes. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then I saw down my dad's wardrobe. He, he gets he gets a lot of things cheap, like cheap doors and cabinet doors, MDF uh, profiled shaker doors. So these there's these big ones. And I thought, actually, oh, that, that looks easier, but there's, that, there's still skill in that. So tomorrow I do plan to... Well, tonight I plan to take some measurements, go to the wood yard, build a frame. I can make whatever noise I like there, which is bliss, and then come back and, and fit it all. So, yeah, it, it, there's just a handful of jobs. And then I can things like I want to build a shoe rack because we keep dumping our shoes in th th this weird place. I tell you what's been on my list for, for years, but I've got no kids is your art easel project. Oh. <laughs> I've been that up for years. In fact, my friend had a baby two years ago uh -huh. and I said, oh, I'd love to make, make her that. But my husband's like, we don't have kids. We've got our house to do. <laughs> so just, what I might do is a mini version, just turn it into a mini yeah. blackboard where I can yeah. use it in my workshop and write my things down. But I've been eyeing that up for yonks. Well, you can always make something like that and then just donate it. I mean, that's what I did with that one is I donated it to our children's hospital. They loved mm -hmm. having it. You know, it was a great thing to have. It was fun to make. And yeah, you don't get in. You're not intimidated by any project, are you? Is there anything that just um, electrics? Well, besides electrics, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it you, you just seems like anything building wise, there's nothing too big that you won't tackle. I definitely, definitely used to be intimidated and I probably still am. But when I've got over that shock, I mm -hmm. think the best thing to do is take a deep breath and break it down one job at a time. There was something that I did recently and I can't remember. Oh, that was it. I, I built a dog bed. Oh yeah, I love that drawer. one with the drawer in it, yeah. Yeah, two weeks ago. And I used to have some old Malm Ikea drawers. And every time I throw something out that's beyond economical repair or whatever, I always like to try and save all the hardware off there just in case i suppose that's the northern in me i think oh you never know <laughs> and actually i looked at the price of those recently on amazon and the dear so i'm glad i salvaged those and i'd i'd stored them away looking at it and thinking i want to make a draw and s seeing other people do certain things without actually understanding how how to do it it ca that can intimidate me so i thought right calm down it's just a draw so I've done basic boxes and things like that. So I watched a few videos like, oh, that that's, looks easy. There was one thing that I got um, wrong was I propped the rails up on some some offcuts, exactly the same, same thickness. But because I held them on there and drew the screw holes, I didn't have dead center. So I realized I had to um, try and guess that a little bit. But one of the tricks that my dad always taught me was when you're screwing hinges on or anything like that, don't put all of the screws in yet. Just do a couple first and then see how you get on and then you can adjust it. Because obviously if you drill, every, put all your screws in and then you want to move it a slight mill, your screw wants to go in that same hole. So yeah, then I realised I'm just going to use a framing square next time. Draw me straight lines and that's it. But I'm glad I did that. Push myself out of my comfort zone. If I went to the wood yard, and my dad said, this is my way, I wouldn't have learned what could have gone wrong. 
So I had to unscrew one of the back ones, let the drawer go where it wanted to. I'm like, ah, that's, and I fixed it straight away. So I'm, I'm glad that yeah. it's, and Hans it's likes, all learning. Hans likes the, Hans likes the bed, your dog. Yeah. Hans. Is that his name, Hans? You call him Hans. 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 Is that yeah. is that, is H-A-N-S? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. In fact, I, I don't know if you'll be able to see my screen. It might not be worth it, but every, when I'm not at home, I usually like bring my office sometimes here for, for things like this or a meeting or whatever. And uh, my husband will send me a picture of him on his bed. So yeah. it's really cool. And I did say maybe he's guarding his tool. Sorry, guarding his toys. Because uh. so, <laughs> they're all in that drawer. Okay, Vicky, let's get into this narrow boat business here. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> to be honest with you, I didn't know what a narrow boat was. Okay. Before I saw your videos on it. Tell an average American like me, <laughs> what is a narrow boat? So a narrow boat. Well, well let's other than the, other than what the name describes, it is a boat. Yeah. It is narrow. I'm probably going to sound like an idiot trying to explain it because I don't know the full history of it. And I should do. But I think it's, let's go back to the 1800s. It might be 1866 or something like that, where the, the canal network system was built for well, it was probably one of the only forms of transport to deliver things from city to city. So a lot of people, at least in the village that I've just moved from, were, they were into ribbon weaving. So the, the transport, that was what it was for. There was a big um, section in the middle where we got cars. So there was less, there was a decline for, for narrow boats. And now, well, before there were working boats and they're about six foot what a six foot ten what a six foot oh god i should know they're not very wide they're, let's just say just over six foot wide wow so yes they're they're narrow but you can have a barge which is a wide beam which is bigger this one's 57 foot long and it's it's great it's you've got a little kitchen right next to me is my little um dining table i built a desk actually a pull out desk which is what what the laptop's on and I should I shouldn't say kitchen. It's called a galley. Oh right. <laughs> and and the toilet I think is called the head. Would you you would describe it sort of as an RV, like a recreational vehicle on water, except it's super yeah. narrow and long. Yours is fifty seven yeah. foot long. Yeah. The other thing as well was when we had our first nar narrowboat hire experience on our honeymoon. Driving it is a bit weird initially, because when you're driving narrowboat. You've got to drive on the opposite side to what we drive on. So it'd be on your side. Oh. And why is tiller, that? Do you, do you know why that is? I've no idea. Hmm. But narrow boats were here before cars. Oh. So I haven't got a clue. But the tiller, the, um, the movie thing at the back that you control the boat, when you push it one way, the front of the boat wants to go the other way because you've got a rudder at the back. And that's. Sorry, I'm not very good at explaining this, but <laughs> you push one way, your boat goes the other other way, and yeah. you've got to really drive slowly because obviously it's really heavy. And to stop, you've got to hit in reverse. You've got to be, you've just got to go slow. There's there's a lot of momentum that you've got to right. be careful with. So it looks like a lot of people may use them as a, a sort of a houseboat, right? They live yes. on them. And it, is that fact, your, I know you mentioned it in one of your videos that that's kind of like your goal is to live on it or is that still? It's my husband's goal. goal. Oh, not yours. I've got lots of tools, so I don't know if I've got. Well, that was going to be my next question is where do you keep your yeah. shop? I mean, yeah. But you can have something called a butty, which butts on top, on, on the back of it. So if I wanted a, to get another narrow boat, a, a smaller one, I could have, I could tow it at the back, but I, that just. We've only had this really for six months, so proper driving, it, it's the idea of a butty just makes me nervous at the minute. But yeah, my husband wants to live on it full time. I don't want to be too far away from my own workshop and my dad's wood yard. So I did say to him, if we get it, we can be away for a month and then at home for a month and back and forth. But you've got to fine tune the internet access. We've got... Um, unlimited we've got a modem at the back so yeah there's 
I think it's a safe idea just to test it out for a while to see if see if you like it. When I had my first narrowboat hire experience, I got uh, land sickness or sea legs. When yeah, I, got I saw off. you saw that on your video. And you I got felt it. really dizzy when I would. I never ever felt seasick or anything, and it's never really that rocky. But we went for a bike ride, sat down for a meal, and I said to my husband, "Is I know this is going to sound really weird, but is the ground rocking?" No. And I was just swaying. And that lasts, well, for me, it lasted 10 days. It was really weird. And you can feel a little bit sick. Or it varies for, for different people. But when you're walking after with sea legs, it feels like someone's slightly pushing you at the back. You've got a bit of a sway. And your body wants to walk at a certain like slow pace. And my mind wants to walk fast and it's it's really weird and that can make you feel a little bit sick i think and do you have a lot of work to do to that you know you're kind of restoring parts of it and kind of fixing it up a bit well when we bought it well when we were buying it we i didn't really want something that I, to do up this was my sanctuary to get away from diy but when we first looked at it we realized oh the windows look like they're leaking and there were various little bits, you know, when you put an offer in and then you go back to check a, check a property or whatever. So there's been bits and bobs. There's, there's not a lot to do, but we want to put like a build a spice rack. We want to, I don't know if you can, in fact, let me just, I'll angle the camera slightly. Where the wall is here, just under here, there's a recess and it's called the gunnels, the gunnels storage. So outside, the gunnels is you can walk along the boat while the boat is is moving but there's a lot of dead space there which is why i put a desk here on the opposite side but i wouldn't mind putting some some shelving there or, or cabinets which you, you can do all sorts of things it's just doing it in a way it doesn't look cluttered because i don't want everything on show i want to put cupboard doors on there's a tv there that i wouldn't mind putting a tv uh, a unit around there it used to be up there I've restored the kitchen worktop. I've done a few things and I've probably completely... Oh, yeah, the, the sink. Polished that was a bit different out. for me. Had to polish the sink. Oh, great. Well, I say, it, I've had a lot of comments saying, why polish a sink? It's just going to get scratched anyway. But <laughs> when you move into something, don't you want it to look, you yeah. know, yeah. look brand new initially? Yeah, it might get some scratches, but we're not on here all the time. It's usually um, just when, when we fancy it. Yeah. So... I haven't seen many scratches on there since, so I'm glad I did that. Plus, I think it's quite useful to know. Is it hard to cook in that kitchen? It's it's real narrow. Well, obviously the whole boat is narrow, but wow, that kitchen, it looks really, really tight. It's surprisingly more spacious than I thought it would be. Um, cooking here, I probably cook a bit differently. I norm well, most of my meals are salads and a protein or something like that so I just really need a fridge a chopping board and some some dressings and I use the oven to cook my husband chips and stuff so actually it's not too bad it's it's been been quite nice it's not having a dish dishwasher on here which is not very nice oh yeah but sometimes it's quite nice to look out the window see the ducks wash the pots and I've really I've in the last few, in the last two or three weeks, I've really got into listening to podcasts while I'm doing housework and stuff. And that is a miracle if anyone can get me to do housework. <laughs> or I'm a big fan of Audible. So I've been constantly listening to, th to book after book after book after book. And if that can keep me busy doing stuff, like washing the pots on here, then that, that's perfect. Yeah. It's, it's a way around it. They, there's just about space for a washing machine, which I wouldn't mind putting one in. And that's where we keep our alcohol in there. <laughs> so that'll have to go. <laughs> is there is there like a whole culture? I would imagine like a whole culture of narrow boat people that, because is it still used for shipping or is it just strictly used now as just like recreational kind of a thing? They, there's big oil tankards. There's not a huge amount that I know of, but there's one in our area. We're in, in Doncaster. And there's one called the Exol Pride that goes from Hull, Hull area, 
to uh, to Rotherham, I think, and back. So you'll see that once a week. But it's really just any work boats is either dredging, removing any um, any silt or any soil that shouldn't be in the canal that's built up, or people selling coal or fuel. So it's mostly, I think, people either they call them continuous cruisers, living on the boat, driving around, or in a marina. We just have it in the marina, and then we'll take it out when we when we want. Like we took it out over the weekend because here it, it was bonfire night on Friday with all the fireworks. So the dog just goes berserk and we knew it was going to be bad at home because it was last year and everyone were in lockdown so there were more fireworks than ever so yeah we just we thought let's just drive as far as we can away in the middle of nowhere but we still heard them but it it was it was a lot easier and it's nice knowing that our boat is about 10 minute drive away from our house so if you forget something it's a relief just oh i can just nip back home and we our local diy store is, is so close as well which i love it's it's half it's just over halfway between um the boat and our house which is handy that's amazing there's just like a network of canals so you can just like, travel anywhere anywhere in the country a lot of places mm. you couldn't go from from england to scotland there's there's a big gap I, don't, mm. I think it's Glasgow oh. where you, you can. So you, you'd have to have your, your boat towed, then then craned into the water if you wanted to do that. And I don't know what their canals are like. Wow. It's, it's, it's not everywhere, but with the Canal and River Trust is, is more of a charity organisation. So they have a lot of helpers trying to restore the old canals. There's a lot that have been closed off. Interesting. I don't think... Th he's just going to be forever ongoing maybe a lot of them won't be in in my lifetime so yeah yeah well i enjoy seeing the videos on the boat i find that really really fascinating i hope you make more of them about the boat i really like that what's your youtube experience been like over the past even to this six years now that's it's a pretty long run it doesn't feel like six years but it was fast doesn't it i i've been loving it apart yeah. from until lockdown started and <laughs> that just i must admit i i felt like it sapped the life out of me staying at home because i was in the middle of renovating that second bungalow which we're in now and because my parents renovate properties as a side hustle for a living i had they that was their business so they were able to keep renovating that property and so i missed a lot of content i really wanted to to get into like seeing how to install a toilet so it just there's not a lot of tradesmen that will say i'll show you how to do it come on i'll get away sort of thing so it's been great it well it was great working with my dad on the property but when i went to when we were had to stay at home the government message message was uh, work at home if you can so i thought well i do have a food blog and i so i can earn and stay safe so I really stuck to the message, staying at home. I didn't go out for materials. DIY stores were closed for maybe about a month or something like that, which I thought was essential, to be honest, for renovating a house. Our boiler broke down in the, I think it was, it might have been May time last year. So we had to get a plumber to come in and replace the boiler. So it's things like that, that if it wasn't classified as an essential thing, you'd be screwed but I just thought no I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna be I'll I'll be good but then all of loads of other people have been doing other projects sharing them on YouTube and I probably should have done that but it would mean going out and buying stuff and the other thing that I was really nervous about was getting pulled over and asking what are you doing outside well I'm I'm buying wood. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> flat, just show them your show them your YouTuber card. You know, yeah. it's like, it's okay. And, I'm a YouTuber. And there was there were people getting getting fines for meeting up for a coffee as their daily exercise, where it was a legal thing to do at the time. And I had this. I was really scared of the idea of someone pulling me up. And even if well, questioning a female doing DIY, blah blah blah. <laughs> 
and I thought I don't want to be all over you sorry all over Twitter yeah. and then a lot of travel <laughs> vloggers we were were getting um were being questioned oh yeah for they got called out mm. yeah yeah so I suppose it's quite similar in a way although I wasn't really traveling but yeah I just I just try to keep out of it so I feel like I've got two years to catch up <laughs> And the dumbbell project was my get back into being me again. So it was a small, small little thing I needed. But yeah, I, I, I do feel like I missed out on a lot of stuff. What's your uh, production like? Do you have like a content mix, things you're thinking about? Well, I should do this type of a project and this type of a project. Or do you just kind of do whatever seems to be necessary at the moment that you need to done? I just I focus on doing stuff that inspires me to, to 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 that motivates me in a particular order that when I'm ready to do a certain project. So I knew that I wanted to or needed to lay a gravel path soon. But for the last few months I'm like, oh I don't want to do it, I've already done that thing and I think you've you've just got to try and do it in an order that that motivates you because if it goes wrong and then you're back to square one and it can I think that can be quite damaging and it can put you off and so yeah I, I don't really think about is this going to be popular or whatever so I suppose even having like a mix of projects and not being very specific can be quite damaging to a YouTube channel like yeah, there's people creating... that make it work you know mm. like creating a sewing pouches for my for my dog's harness but that was secretly because he was our our ring he, he was holding the rings for our wedding at our <laughs> wedding so I thought well I'm not going to tell anyone just yet but I'm making these pouches and so the next video by the way I'm married and that's what the pouches were for <laughs> so sewing wasn't everybody's cup of tea so I'd probably keep away from that there's a couple of sewing projects projects I want to do on the narrowboat but I've actually started to phase the narrowboat projects on a different channel now because oh you've got that. another channel now yeah well, that, of, what's that channel is it public? it's just called narrow all, all i've named it is narrow narrowboat vlogs uh with the carpenter's daughter oh. i've just kept it like that i'm not putting pressure on myself to put weekly videos out or anything like that it's just to home and organize the content because i realized that not everybody wants to see narrowboats or it's, it might not be their thing Right. So yeah, I'd learn things the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your favorite part of the YouTube process? Do you edit your own videos too? Yes, yeah. everything is Shoot, pretty. Shoot, edit everything. Yes, yeah, um, and I film everything as well. What What was oh, What do I enjoy? You know, I don't. I used to say I don't really enjoy learning. That's the struggle part. But when you get to the end, that is the best. That's just the best adrenaline rush. Seeing like, wow, I did that. For when I did my own tiling in my kitchen at the last place, I've never done anything like that before. It took me on and off two weeks because I was still doing a full-time job. And the kitchen was, we couldn't really cook in the kitchen. I'd, it was a mess for two weeks. But I slowly, slowly learned from YouTube videos and then when you look back, that was a big turning point for me, actually. Looking back at the old photos and thought, I realised, wow, I didn't realise the kitchen looked that bad. Because you completely forget it once it's transformed. And then that then inspired me to, oh, I want to try doing my own decking. Then I want to try doing my own patio. And you just get curious, like, what else can I do? So that... Sorry about my computer. I can't turn, <laughs> no, I no, have no. turn the notifications off. I only know volume up and down, and that's it. <laughs> and it would just mute you. <laughs> Do you ever find it hard to know what to keep in a video and what to get rid of, or do you do you shoot just what you need? Um, I probably do find it difficult because mm. you don't really know when you look at your engagement rate like when people drop off then oh, i probably haven't mastered I it that. i hate yeah. that that number <laughs> um, but i think it's i always like to try and i i don't really like 
watching someone sat down talking it's just them there's no b-roll talk with demonstrations of what they're doing so i have to spice things up with different camera angles but that does mean me running around with a camera stop what i'm doing moving the camera there i don't bother setting up loads of different cameras because i know it's going to be a pain in the backside oh, yeah. editing them so i absolutely hate that um sorry i completely forgot what you asked now <laughs> no i've always shot with a single camera too i find that's mm. the best way to do it but it i think that i've noticed though over the years i, I get really um i i've gotten a lot better at what i shoot and i shoot just like a few seconds and then i know to shut the camera off otherwise i end up with just hours of stuff yes it's like yeah. way too hard to go through all of that stuff i like to try and film enough so i've got enough action while I'm explaining a process, there's nothing worse than having to slow down, stretch the, the footage and your arm is like that, all, all slow-mo and it just, it doesn't look very professional, but if it, if I have to do that to, yeah. to make a point, then, then I do. It looks like you've really upped your thumbnail game too in the past. In the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been constantly listening to podcasts on how to make better thumbnails and stuff. And I thought right. I should know this, but I, I don't, I've never really taken the time to do it. And I've always had Photoshop, Yeah. but I've, I've only ever used Lightroom. I don't take time to learn these things, even like SketchUp. <laughs> I really want to know how to do, yeah. but I just. Yeah, it's just one of those it, things you just got to sit down and just do it sometime, you know. Yeah, and I'm not very good at sitting down. This is probably the longest I'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's why I don't sit down. I'm always standing. <laughs> hey, you know what was interesting? I saw that you did some TV appearances after you did your your first, after you got into your first house. Is that right? Is that how they got interested in, in yeah. what you were doing? Um, so the first one, I can't remember how it came about now, actually. Every now and again, I will get an email. Do you want to be in this TV show? And, and I think you're in Scotland that's a bit far and is TV the you know is it all that I'm, I'm not entirely convinced but I got asked by a it was called BBC it, well it was called right on the money it was on BBC one it was a show about people going to great lengths to save money and and when I have to go to to something usually drive to an event or whatever I'm because I've, I've done cooking live, not live things, but I've done cooking demonstrations for Tastefully Vicky. And I get really, I feel really sick with anxiety just beforehand. When the camera crew came to film me do a raised step at the back of my conservatory, just a, basically a sunroom, I didn't feel as nervous, which really surprised me because the, the, the morning I'm, I'm in pieces usually, but because they were coming to my house, I didn't feel, I suppose the anticipation of going somewhere is, it can make it worse. But with DIY, you've just got to get on with it. You've got to get on in the zone and you sort of forget people are there. So yeah, they filmed me doing that. And then there was about a two year gap where I got asked just after the first lockdown last year to be on a show called ITV. So, Love Your Weekend with Alan Titchmarsh. I don't know if you've seen Alan Titchmarsh there, but he's huge over here. He's the he's the king of gardening. And he used to, I think it was Ground Force. Oh God, I'd be really embarrassed if I got that wrong because I used to grow up with my parents once a week watching him and his team go into somebody's garden and completely turn it around. Gorgeous flower borders and and stuff and i wasn't even interested in anything like that but it i think it was a family thing for most well for most families so when i got contacted to be on his new show on itv last year i in well first of all i missed the first email because i hate i'm not very good at replying to emails so i suppose you're lucky you got through because i oh, don't like doing emails yeah. <laughs> i'm not very disciplined but I didn't notice it. And you know, on Outlook, or I don't know if you use Outlook, but when you get a follow-up email from someone, it groups them together. Hmm. So you don't see it as a separate email anyway. So I had to apologize when I realized <laughs> what it was. And I instantly said yes, the moment I realized what it was. It, it was so much fun. 
neat. But the travelling was a bit... It yeah. was closer to where I was at the time. But the last two shows that I was on, oh, my God. I tried to get loads of sleep. I was so tired. And I was worried that... I, oh, you know, when you think... I hope I said the right thing there or I didn't make a fool out of yeah. myself. I was so tired. <laughs> it's so different, isn't it, when there's a whole crew around shooting you and you don't have control over the final output because, you know, you shoot your own videos. Yeah. You know, if you do something yeah. dumb, you yeah. can always yeah. edit it out. Did you see any, like, boost in traffic to your to your YouTube channel or anything? Um, no, I, I don't think so. And it Those was things don't really show. cross-pollinate very well, I've noticed, TV to YouTube, it hmm. seems like. I, interestingly, I got more traffic being on one of the BBC radio shows on a Saturday morning. I think it depends on the time that you're oh. on. So it wasn't really, you, you might think Sunday morning is primetime TV, mm -hmm. but I got the impression it wasn't at all. So my friends on, on TV at the moment, and who you know, Average Joe's Joinery. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's a comp, in a competition show. And I've noticed that his, sub, oops, uh, his subscribers have been increasing. I, I love looking at these things. And I've been egging him on, like, come on, Joe. Oh, that's great. He, he's, he's on something. Um, it's called Handmade um, Best, Britain's Best Woodworker. Yeah. And that's, in fact, <clears throat> it was around the time when they were looking for people, I said, Joe, apply for that. And and I had the option to apply for it. I thought, no, I'm going to go for Alan Titchmarsh. Because <laughs> I grew up with Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> oh, so neat. it's interesting to watch his um, his path. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in a, in a while. I worked with him for a little while on another project I was doing on Home and Garden Channel, which was a total flop. But I'll have to, get, I'll have to contact him again and say hi. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> great. Hey, so you got anything coming up that you can share with us? What's any big news for your channel? Um, well, something that my parents are planning, and we've, we've been planning together, sort of, it's really, really early stages, is the property that my mum and dad are, are at. They've got about an acre of land at the back, and it's mostly for chickens. So something that, in fact, they've, they've had this, just a little side note, my dad built three bungalows, with a, with a team, he did most of the roof rafters, did all the woodworking, and he probably did a lot of jobs himself, but he knows the electricians and the brickies. So these bungalows are there for, they've been there for about 30 years. And when I, I was talking to someone about this the other day, when I was seven, my dad used to say, that's going to be your bedroom. And they never moved in to this, this property. And so I ended up going to uni, but now they're talking about building a property in the back garden from scratch. And... Um, the plan is to do that together oh, and i'm nice. really excited just to see the whole process my dad actually said the hardest bit is when you get con some contractors in is getting them to to like crack on and do the work and and not slack so i what the, the thing that scares me is all the the building control stuff the whole process that you assume might be either difficult but my dad's friend is a building inspector so he actually helped on the bungalow that that um we're now in so i didn't really see a great deal apart from him coming around saying yep yeah, that's all right yep yeah, <laughs> yeah so i want to see from start to finish and understand and and i, I want to do more plumbing not obviously gas plumbing i won't touch that either but water plumbing i've done i found that really really um encouraging when I fit in my own utility kitchen, because that was something that I didn't think I'd be able to, to do. I just thought, I want to do this. I broke each project down per video, and that was really for my own pace, because I could just take it in slowly, and I'm, I'm glad I did it. So I plumbed up a sink and a washing machine, and it might sound really basic to, to some people, but when you've never done it before, it looks, it looks daunting. And then you can start fixing pipes if you've got a a, a drip so i want to do some more serious things like the toilets <laughs> doesn't sound very exciting but it does to me that kind of stuff is always valuable to people and it, it always adds to the mix on youtube definitely mm. vicky i want to thank you for joining me on the podcast it's been really interesting talking to you i love learning about the narrow boat especially and i love seeing how people always talk about like their journey mm -hmm. but 
Yeah, I could really see how you and your channel and your projects have just evolved over over the past six years. It's, I love seeing that. It's really great to see what you've got coming up. And when I do your art easel, I will tag you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it one day. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun to see see your take on it. You have to put a little spin on it, put the Vicky yeah. the Vicky touch on it. But yeah. thanks again for joining me. I'll have to have you on again sometime. Thanks for having me. And thanks for listening, everybody. I'll see you next time.